How is it possible we have a prime minister in the 21st century in a democratic Commonwealth country applauding China? That's a big question, David, but general apathy in Canada to participate in, in the civics process and to, to actually understand what our country is and our history and heritage is, um, it's a shame our education system doesn't highlight that. So it, it leads to the state we have, where in 2015 we get a prime minister elected because he was somebody's uh, son. Because honestly, Mr. Prime Minister, I was prepared to be injured in the line of duty when I, went to, when I joined the military. Nobody forced me to join the military. I was prepared to be killed in action. What I wasn't prepared for, Mr. Prime Minister, is Canada turning its back on me. So which veteran was it that you were talking about? Why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. Chris, we're going to go to the Prime Minister's office. I think you're going to accompany us. We are going to deliver our petition. I want to thank our viewers. Uh, more than 10,000 of you signed this signature. Uh, and the call to action was simply this. It is time to raise the Canadian flags across this country permanently. Our veterans paid the ultimate price for our freedom, and they deserve to be honoured every day, but especially on Remembrance Day. And even though the flags are up, we still want the, the Prime Minister to get the message that thousands of Canadians were upset and disgusted uh, with this virtue signaling, especially given that he didn't even show up for Truth and Reconciliation Day on September 30th. He was too busy surfing. So let's go across the street and deliver this petition right now. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Ottawa. Well, folks, I'm at the glorious National War Memorial. And uh, take a look around. It's the day before Remembrance Day. And lo and behold, the flags mercifully have been raised to full staff. And that is indeed the reason for my visit here. Perhaps the Justin Trudeau Liberals knew we were on our way. We've been advertising it. It was to deliver our petition, raise our flag. You know, back in the spring, that's when the flags were originally lowered to have staff. And there was perverse irony to it, wasn't there? As my colleague Adam Seuss has pointed out, these flags were lowered by the same politicians um, who are basically doing nothing to advance Indigenous affairs. We still have dirty drinking water on so many reserves. So was this all virtue signaling? Well, it was outrageous. It's been half a year that these flags have been down. Do you know they've been down for a longer period of time than all the dignitaries honoured in the past century? Can you imagine? And you may have noticed I'm standing next to Chris Semchuk. He is a veteran. And uh, I think Chris has a word or two to say about these flags being lowered for so long. Chris, what did you make of it? Was this truly meaningful? Uh, because when I look at it, um, it just seems like so much virtue signaling to me, given that nothing really tangibly is happening on the reserves, as far as I can tell. It's virtue signaling, and uh, our humble Prime Minister, at least he did submit and bring them up before, and thanks for the petition, which I signed as well. Um, it, it's all for naught. It, it, this, this government's smoke and mirrors to me. And you know, and speaking of our Prime Minister, I mean, I thought that was just insult to injury that on the first Truth and Reconciliation Day holiday, September 30th, which he brought to fruition, and we now have a Inuit uh, Governor General, instead of doing anything meaningful to mark that occasion, he buggered off to Tofino to go surfing. What do you make of that? I guess he was honoring the Haida Gwaii uh, while he was there on his surfboard, at least. Yeah. Uh, it, the hypocrisy, uh, I call it the Lebrano uh, three H's. 
<laughs> doctrine of hype, hubris, and hypocrisy. And um, it seems like our current prime minister has that in spades. Well, my boss, Ezra Levent, will love that. He, I think, coined uh, the Lebranos uh, nickname. And I, I wonder if uh, Trudeau will make the ultimate sacrifice uh, tomorrow. Uh, that is actually showing up to our Remembrance Day sir, uh, ceremony as opposed to uh, going surfing on some beach somewhere. We'll find out. But, um, Chris, tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, so my story is, uh, well, I was a veteran uh, of the Air Force for 20 years I served. I joined in 1997 and then I got medically released formally at the end of the process, completely finished. Uh, it started because I was diagnosed with PTSD in 2015 mm -hmm. and through the release process I got um, my final date of military service was January 6, 2016. So since then, I, you know, as a veteran you're... You, as any service member, you don't want to give up service. It's in, it's in our blood. Uh, you're a veteran forever. Um, so I fell into starting, I started a YouTube channel on September 11th, uh, 2019, when uh, Trudeau dropped the writ mm. on September 11th, which was a slap in the face, mm. um, to raise awareness about veterans' issues and in support of the People's Party Veterans uh, platform mm. or policy plank because it's exactly what veterans need to have happen. Uh, we've been marginalized for far too long. And Chris, what is the name of that YouTube channel? Uh, if you look up uh, Veterans Voice Chris Semchuk, okay. it'll come up. Now, you were an Afghanistan veteran. You are an Afghanistan veteran right there. What do you make, going back to September when the election was called, that was when we and, and the United States abandoned our allies, our interpreters and their families, in some case, cases even citizens it makes you wonder now that the taliban is back in charge in afghanistan and literally you know hanging people in the streets of kabul do you ever wonder why we even went there in the first place chris every day never stop wondering about it <laughs> that's part of the ptsd um it was a real slap in the face to our allies, to the Afghans that we helped, the Afghans that helped us to pull out in the manner that we did. Um, disgraceful, in my humble opinion. And so unavoidable. Um, it, this was a preventable tragedy. We could have done, you know, we could have been airlifting people out of there months before we announced we were leaving. Um, what do you think is the reason for that? Why did we abandon our allies, at least why did the Justin Trudeau Liberals abandon them? The, well, it's uh, the New World Order from Trudeau since 15. We're a post-nation state, as he called us, and so why stand up for anything other than their ideology? You know, I think you're onto something. Um, several years ago in Toronto, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau um, said that he has a admiration for the basic type of dictatorship uh, China is in terms of getting things done. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. And now years later we have seen China uh, emerge as the most dangerous bully on the, the world stage. Um, how is it possible, Chris, to you, and you've served this country, standing up for our democracy, for our rights and freedoms, how is it possible we have a prime minister in the 21st century in a democratic commonwealth country applauding China? That's a big question, David, but general apathy in Canada to participate in, in the civics process and to, to actually understand what our country is and our history and heritage is um, it's a shame our education system doesn't highlight that yeah. so it, it leads to the state we have where in 2015 we get a prime minister elected because he was somebody's de uh, son yeah. yeah the lucky dna club uh, and when it comes to the armed forces when it comes to veterans we have veterans such as yourself suffering from PTSD. We have homeless veterans, if you can imagine, in our nation. And yet, remember folks back in Edmonton a few years when he got a question from a veteran at a town hall meeting of, uh, and, uh, and what Prime Minister Trudeau's answer was? Check it out. Because honestly, Mr. Prime Minister, I was prepared 
to be injured in the line of duty when I, went to, when I joined the military. Nobody forced me to join the military. I was prepared to be killed in action. What I wasn't prepared for, Mr. Prime Minister, is Canada turning its back on me. So which veteran was it that you were talking about? Why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. Veterans are asking too much to Brock Blachek. At, as he also said to him, thanks for, thanks for your courage for speaking to me here today, which I thought was a real slap in the face to say to a soldier as well. That was uh, another nail in that statement. It, it is astonishing to me, Chris, because on one hand, he's saying you are asking as a veteran for too much. This is somebody that put their life on the line. And yet, um, a year earlier, he had cut a check for $10.5 million to our homegrown Al-Qaeda terrorist, Omar Khadr, who took the life of one of our allies. Are we living on the bizarro Superman world? Uh, we sure are. And um, in my humble opinion, I'm, I mean, I'm no expert, that payout to Omar was because why would you want things to go through court? Because court will actually bring out some lessons learned and some truth of what actually went down vis-a-vis -vis our government's interaction with it. So let's just write a check and bury it. Yeah, it was astonishing. The official reason was that to fight this in court was going to cost us far more than ten and a half million. Isn't it funny, Chris? Suddenly, the Justin Trudeau Liberals We're became concerned. fiscal conservatives overnight. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 rather fortuitous for them to find that reason, isn't it? So. Well, Chris, we're going to go to the Prime Minister's office. I think you're going to accompany us. We are going to deliver our petition. I want to thank our viewers. Uh, more than 10,000 of you signed this signature. Uh, and the call to action was simply this. It is time to raise the Canadian flags across this country permanently. Our veterans paid the ultimate price for our freedom, and they deserve to be honoured every day but especially on Remembrance Day, and even though the flags are up, we still want the, the Prime Minister to get the message that thousands of Canadians were upset and disgusted uh, with this virtue signaling, especially given that he didn't even show up for Truth and Reconciliation Day on September 30th. He was too busy surfing. So let's go across the street and deliver this petition right now. Hi, sir. We're just, uh, my name is David Menzies from Rebel News. I'm just here to deliver a petition to the Prime Minister and your colleague at the front door told me to come to number 11. Is, is this the correct place? Yes, it is, yeah. Oh, okay then. So I, I can't get in, I guess, but I put it in a box. Is that how it works? Uh, well, you can put it in an envelope. Oh, okay then. Um, that's the thing. I don't have an envelope for. I, I've got a. I could put it in a box. Okay. Sure. Okay then. There's another petition in here, but it's not for you guys. Okay. <laughs> We've been very busy. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Do I need a postal code or anything? Or? Uh, no, that should be good. Okay. All right, then. Thank you, sir. You have a good day. All right. Well, there you go, folks. The package has been delivered. More than 10,000 of your signatures are on that petition. And uh, hopefully, Prime Minister Trudeau gets the message. Hopefully, he actually receives it. We know he doesn't care for dissenting voices, but I want to thank all our viewers. I want to thank veteran Chris Semchuk uh, for coming, for answering the call to raise these flags. It is so nice, isn't it, Chris, to see the flags at full staff at last? It, it, it sure is. It sure is, as it should be. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Well, you know, folks, when it comes to getting outside the greater Toronto area to deliver petitions, to cover events, there is indeed a cost when it comes to that. And as you know, we don't receive a nickel of government funding, nor would we accept it if offered. So please, if you can, go to realreporters.com, that's realreporters.com, and make a donation. We 
really stretch your dollar. We respect your money, folks. We don't go, we don't travel lavishly, but we have to cover these stories because you know the people in the mainstream media, they won't.